Hello. At the weekend, uh, our little diocese is holding its 30th synod. And I think I've commented before that we've been very lucky to to have made it to 30 years old. Um, there are some little bodies in the UK that have not uh, made it that far. Um, but admittedly, we, you know, life is life is difficult when you're in a small small church. But we have plenty of interesting things and happy things to talk about at Synod. Um, where we're going, what future we have, and uh, what the status quo is. Um, of course, there's always some ups and downs, um, as there would be in any any church. But on the whole, we've made it to 30 years, and that certainly uh, shows that we've got some form of sticking power. But I think one of the things that we still struggle with is, is a lot of misconception. And I've tried to give little videos to, to, to ease that misconception. I've even tried to, uh, to write books. I don't like plugging books very much because I think it sounds a bit, um, uh, a bit, uh, a bit rude, really, isn't it? But I do try and write books for people that explain who we are and what we do. And I wrote this little book, um, uh, which may or may not come out correctly on your screen it's called it's called the meaning of anglican catholicism and i'd rather think that my uh my video uh has flipped it around the meaning of anglican catholicism i wrote it because people get confused um only the other day um i wrote about it about the book um and someone said what what a blooming cheek it was that I'd written it, um, considering that we claim to be Anglican and yet, have nothing, um, yet are uh, outside the Church of England, and that we claim to be Catholic and yet we're not Roman Catholic. You know, what, a, you know, what, what cheek we have um, trying to hold these two definitions. And I thought it was sad, because mainly because that person didn't actually think about what was going on. Uh, they fill back on um, modern understandings of what Anglican is and what Catholicism is. Now, I've tried very hard to say what I mean by Anglican. Um, some uh, Christians call themselves um, Anglicans, meaning nouns. Um, I don't use it like that, and neither does the Anglican Catholic Church, because we prefer to go back to how the word was first used. And the word is first used um, in the phrase Ecclesia Anglicana, and thereby um, hangs hangs the tale. So it's, it's obviously the, the Church of the, the Angles, if you like. So, clearly, we regard ourselves as part of the Catholic Church in England, and thus our, our expression of Catholicism uh, is meant for and inspired by the English-speaking people. Um, our liturgy is in English. Though I say that we uh, in the Anglican Catholic Church, we do have um, non-English churches that use again use the vernacular. Uh, we have a, a wonderful um, bishop in Colombia um, who is doing some absolutely sterling work. Of course, he he will be using um, the, the Spanish uh, version of the Book of Common Prayer and the Spanish missals, which is wonderful. So it does show that we, we, even though we call ourselves Anglican Catholic Church, it's it's to do with our heritage, it's to do with our family, and that's one of the like, things that I I try to bring out in 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 my in my little book, um, whereby it's not so much um, 
concrete definitions, but more like family resemblances. So that the idea of Anglican is more to do with what your heritage is, what your, your family relationship is. And I think that's much more Christian than uh, to have a... Uh, a, a, a definition such as uh, the defini definition of a sacrament or a definition of immaculate conception or some, whatever. Um, and because it's a church, I think the family uh, resemblance is, is, is so much more human than um, just pure theological terminology. Now, what about Catholic? Well, as we keep saying, the, the Roman Catholic Church um, doesn't have the monopoly on the term Catholic. Um, is the Pope Catholic? Sometimes, as the Orthodox might say. I think there were Catholic pope, the Popes in the eyes of the Orthodox Church at, uh, at some point in time. But from, from their point of view, that that, that ceased to happen. But that's that's a, uh, a different story. Um, again, what do we do in the Anglican Catholic Church? We go back to where the word was first used, not with all the the accretions that it got that got bound up with it, but how it was first used. And we go back to Saint Ignatius of Antioch, who talks about again a relationship between the people and the bishop. And it's, it's there in, in his letter to the Smyrnaeans. And I think Magnesians, I, I, I'll have to check one out. But, um, and also, um, there is, there is St. Cyril of get it right, Alexandria also put forward a definition of Catholicism which ties in with what St Ignatius says, and gets bound together by St Vincent of Lorraine. Um, so that's where Catholics are, and it, it, it's, it's there before, really, the, the, the whole uh, papacy gets going. Um, the idea of a supreme monarch, the Pope being having that sort of power, having... Uh, a power over every diocese, and thereby every bishop having an extension, um, uh, 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 be, every bishop being an extension of the papal authority. That's not something we believe in the Anglican Catholic Church. So, obviously, what we, you know, we, we have our differences, but we move on. And so here we are, um, coming up for our thirtieth synod, and um, it's going to be a good it's going to be a good occasion. Um, I'm afraid I'm afraid I'm preaching, so uh, that's one downside. But uh, people, uh, it's an opportunity for us to meet new people. Um, got some interesting people uh, who who I'm going to be meeting for the first time. I'm looking forward to it. It's part of our family. We are Anglican Catholics. We are a family. And I think that's an advantage that we have over larger churches. Because we have much more of a, a sense of relationship between people than, than the, the um, rather administrative powers, the bureaucratic powers of, of the, the larger churches have. So that's where we're going. And I'm looking forward to Simon very much. And perhaps, you never know, I might see you there too. Until then, God bless you. God bless you uh, in your church, wherever that is. May you find within it all the comfort uh, that our Lord Jesus Christ gives. God bless you in your ministry in the world, that you may bring out that, that bring to people that wonderful gift of grace that uh, the Holy Ghost gives and God bless you particularly if you are struggling to work out who you are and where you're going. God bless you and please pray for me 
and the Anglican Catholic Church.